Today we're looking at Renogy's Lycan 5000 power box. This all-in-one 48-volt system delivers 4,800 watts of power, and that can be extended by adding additional batteries. It's got a 3,500-watt inverter charger with a peak power outage of 7,000 watts. We're going to be using and abusing this over the next couple of days just to discharge it, charge it back up, see how it works, show you how it runs. So stick with us. This is Sherry. This is Hutch. And this is Hamlet. Together, we are freedom in a can. If you're familiar with power stations like the Phoenix 300 that have a built-in charge controller, battery, and inverter, well, the Lycan is just that, except on steroids. It has two 48-volt, 50-amp-hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, giving you a total of 4,800 watts. With a safe depth of discharge of 20%, you'll have 3,840 watt-hours in total. The batteries are equipped with a battery management system, which helps to equalize the charge of the batteries over the life cycle, which is 4,500 cycles at about 10 years capacity. They also have a self-heating mechanism. When the battery core temperature drops below 41 degrees, it will kick in and heat those batteries for you. And this pretty much alleviates the issue with lithium iron phosphate batteries, which stop charging below 32 degrees. You can expand the battery capacity of the Lycan and add six more batteries in parallel, giving you 19.2 kilowatts of usable power. Around the other side of the unit is a 48 volt solar inverter charger. Now this is a hybrid system that includes a 3,500 watt pure sine wave inverter. It includes a 40 amp battery charger, so you can charge off of AC, a gas generator, or solar. And it also includes a charge controller, which is an 80 amp MPPT charge controller. The unit is also pre-wired with circuit breakers. So you've got the solar input as well as the battery input and some surge protection. And then this is the output for the AC 20 amp, 30 amp, as well as the AC input. It is also equipped with a communication hub, which simplifies wiring, bringing the ethernet cables in from the batteries as well as the inverter. And this talks to the BT2 module and that way you can monitor the system with your smartphone. So when you open up the DC Home app, this is what it's gonna look like. And you've got these two ethernet cables. So you're just gonna disconnect one temporarily and then hit the plus sign, the search for device, and then you're gonna confirm the inverter. And you're gonna plug that one back in and unplug the other one. Again, hit the plus sign, and it now shows the batteries. So we're gonna confirm that, and we're gonna plug that back in. And now you can see that both components are connected to the smartphone, connected through the BT2 module, and we can check them out. So now it's time for the fun part. We're going to test out the 20 amp output on the Lycan and see how some of our household appliances do. One of the cool things about the DC Home app is that it'll show you on the front screen at your current load how much longer you can use the batteries. So we've got batteries at 38% right now. 
and the remaining time 1.76 hours at this load. We noticed that the unit quit working right at around 20%, which is a safe depth of discharge for lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's cutting itself off as soon as the first battery reaches 20%. So you won't have to worry about over discharging the batteries. So we're getting my parents' RV ready for camping season, and this is gonna be the pre-season test of all their appliances. The perfect opportunity to try out that 30 amp plug and the output on the Lycan and see how well it performs. So my parents' shore power plug has this great 90 degree angle, which is awesome for plugging in at the campsite, but it doesn't work so well with the Lycan's waterproof housing. We actually had to remove this in order to plug it in. So the camper is plugged into the Lycan at the 30 amp output, just like it would be at a campsite at a 30 amp breaker. We turned everything off just to figure out what is that phantom load, the things that you can't turn off, like the clock radio or the LP gas protector or the converter, which is constantly charging the batteries out there on the tongue. So that base load, that phantom load is at 108 watts. As soon as you turn on the fridge, that bumps it up to 420 watts. And then we were trying to see, well, what else can we run safely? So we had the coffee maker going. We had the electric heater going. We also had an electrical skillet running. But as soon as we turned on the microwave, everything bumped up to 4,190 watts, 35 amps. And it, of course, tripped the inverter charger. It tripped that breaker. And we needed to shut things down and reset it. But that's just like it would be if you were at a campsite and you're running more than 30 amps, you're gonna to have to go out there and reset that breaker. So we thought we'd test it again, but use both of the outputs this time. So we had the camper all running its phantom load, plus the coffee maker, electric heater, the microwave this time, no skillet, that's all on the 30 amp. And then we plugged in the hair dryer into the 20 amp outlet and ran that for about 30 seconds. Everything bumped back up to that 4,200 watt threshold and it quickly shut down again. So we were able to run the camper completely off the Lycan just like we would be running it off shore power. We were able to do all of our testing inside, hang out in there, heat the interior, as well as clean it from stem to stern with a vacuum cleaner and the Lycan battery is only down to about 53%. So we love the self-heating function of these 48 volt batteries, but we wanted to see just how much battery juice they used. So yesterday we took them down to 20% and then charged them up using AC, which took about three and a half hours to get them up to 100%. So we left them for 12 hours in a cold garage below 40 degrees, and it only used 1% of the battery charge during that time. We know that inverters by themselves use power, and larger inverters use even more. So we were curious to see just how much battery juice that the inverter itself would use without anything else plugged in. So we did the same test that we did before, left it in the garage for 12 hours, and as you can see, it dropped from 100% to 88.6% during those 12 hours. We've had a ton of fun here on Hutch's Parents Property testing out the Lycan and using and abusing it. The Lycan is a powerful all-in-one battery system. It's portable enough to move it around on your property where you might need it, easily securable in the basement or the garage, and it makes the perfect indoor backup power supply during a power outage. You can also use it for an off-grid construction project to power your tools and then turn around and use it to power the home. Just add solar panels. Or you could use it to provide shore power for a seasonal RV site on your property. There are so many uses for this all-in-one system. Now keep in mind, all the components within the Lycan are sold individually on the Renogy website. So if you want to do it yourself and do the wiring and the circuit breakers and the surge protection, you can. Or you can just buy this unit with the wheels on it. Here is our Lycan scorecard. We gave it a 91 out of 100. A solid A-. 
Check out our blog in the video description below for more details. So if you like the video, do us a favor and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about solar DIY RV projects. And be sure to check that video description below for those affiliate links and promo code HAMLIN to save some money with furniture. It's spring, we're gonna get back out there. We'll see you on the road. See you on the road.